So good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. Windchill Wednesdays, we're calling it here at 3HTI. My name is Rob Romanowski. I'm the Director of Sales Operations with 3HTI. And on our panel today is Jeff Gavio, our Director of Marketing, as well as Anthony Garner, who is an Applications Engineer and Solutions Consultant with PTC. So our webinar today, uh, focused on Windchill, Windchill Tips, is Windchill Supplier Management. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of things um, that can slow up your overall processes if you don't have your suppliers and parts management done properly. Last week, we discussed parts, ma parts management. This week, we're going to discuss supplier management. So without further ado, Anthony, uh, you have the con. We can see your screen. Take it away, my friend, and thanks for helping us today. Yep, no problem, and thank you for the magnificent introduction. So as Rob was talking about, I'm actually going to be talking to us today about windshield supplier management, or SUMA as it's referred to in short. And what that really lets us do is it allows us to control both our supply parts from an approved vendor and approved manufacturer list, as well as our approved manufacturer and approved vendors themselves as very strictly controlled and very easily understood windshield options within our system. But before I be getting into our demo proper, I would like to start to talk a little bit about the challenges that people have faced, which is PROC PTC to develop the solution, talking a little bit about the capabilities from a high point, and then we're gonna go into a brief example of what this looks like in action in like a running wind chill system. Okay, so let me switch over there. So the first thing I always like to start with with these type of demonstrations and conversations is the challenges that's PROC PTC to develop and to continue to support and develop the solution. So manufacturers today face numerous challenges that component and supplier management can help address. One of the big ones is increasing customer and market demand. For example, regional preferences for product options lead to an increase in product diversity and portfolio size. This translates into a greater number of product launches, additionally critical time to market and time to volume, volume need to meet customer demands and shorten development cycles. There's also internal cost pressures to lower the cost of goods sold require companies to optimize spend inventory and improve efficiency of their workforce. And along with this, which is kind of putting a finer point in the past two objects we just talked about, there's an increased supply chain complexity. So competing in diverse and demanding markets with multi-tiered supply chains results in component and supplier proliferation, as well as in increased sourcing risks such as supply chain disruptions and new regulatory obligations. The integration of a new corporate acquisitions also adds additional complexity and proliferation. So these all add into the idea of being able to control your approved manufacturer, approved vendor list, and your supplier management strategy from within one central point, as opposed to it being siloed into different aspects in order for it to be much more effective and efficient in addressing these specific issues. So going into that, that's really where the solution of supplier management actually comes in. And as I was saying before, supplier management or SUMA allows for us to fully control and understand and add a life cycle to those supply components as well as the suppliers themselves within our windshield system. So one big aspect we're actually able to do is to create multi-dimensional bombs where we can have the not only the actual parts themselves or the windshield technology part, but also the actual parts that are being supplied to us from our manufacturer or vendor, as well as a full understanding of their sourcing and cost status is right within the bill view of that bomb. And along with that view from that bill of material, we also have advanced search capabilities in relation to that approved manufacturer, approved vendor list information, where I can refine my searches down to exactly the approved object from this specific company. And this allows me to very easily come to an understanding about who I'm using, why am I using, and what context should I be using them into, and to, in a larger extent, completely formalize the introduction and the disqualification of manufacturers and vendors. We also have full out-of-the-box reporting capabilities directly within there, so I can add a click, generate a, a bill of material with AML and AVL, as we're seeing there, and that's only one aspect, I'll say, of the out-of-the-box reporting available. And again, a big thing within Windshield is digital traceability. So I am never left in the dark about why we're using this vendor as opposed to that vendor. We have a full cradle to grave traceability of the disqualification, the approval process for any vendor and any of those vendors parts that we're utilizing within our larger assemblies. 
to jumping in a little bit more about the capabilities, um, we were able to very efficiently manage supplier sourcing options and preferences. And that also allows for very easy reuse of those preferred suppliers during design. So we don't have to continue to reinvent the wheel when we have to go to a bought versus built component within our assembly. We have a set list of approved vendors. We have a set list of why they're actually being approved. And then from there, we can reuse those already supply components within our already system for procurement and even re-procurement. And like I was saying before, this also allows us to very easily standardize the introduction disqualification process of the supply components, as well as the suppliers themselves. And of course, what value does this add? Essentially, it solves the problems we were talking about in the outset. It can reduce time to market, it's gonna reduce product and supply chain complexity, and it's gonna reduce supplier component and inventory costs. So without further ado, I'm actually gonna jump into my uh, windshield system here, just to give you a quick view of that. Let me go ahead and switch over screens. So here, this is the familiar, what I always like to call the splash page of windshield we're logged in right now is Pat, the product manager. And Pat has the responsibility right now to review some of the um, supply components that are being utilized within our larger assemblies here. So in order to do that, the first thing we're actually going to do is we're going to browse to that information. And one of the tools we have available for us is Parts Link, which gives us access to that classification explorer. And with the classification explorer, I can browse my objects in windshield from a tagging context. So I can see all my electrical components from all my electronic components down to every single type of electronic component. So I can navigate directly to what it is I'm looking for. So in this case, we can select into our electronic component. The thing we're most interested in in this case is our capacitors. And once we've gotten to that search result, you can actually see we have our faceted search to the right where we can refine our search results um, more exactingly down to exactly what we're looking for. But with the addition of AML and AVL, we also have an additional um, subheading for which we can utilize our faceted search, in this case being sourcing status. So in this case, for all of my capacitors that are currently existing in my system, I can down select to exactly just my approved uh, my approved components. So whatever's gone through our formal disqualification approval process for our capacitors, I can essentially zero in into. So in order to do that, I'm just going to select onto approved, and that's going to down select all of these different items to exactly the um, approved capacitors that we're actually going to be utilizing here. Okay, so in that case, I'm actually going to dive into the information page for one of these specific um, components. In this case, this being this um, OTS 000 1017 capacitor, and it's going to bring us in this case directly to our AML and AVL page where we have information specifically around the manufacturers and vendors and their supplied parts for um, this specific component. So in this case, we can see we're getting supplied one component. We can see that manufacturing part number that we populate as well as the cage code, the manufacturer from which it res um, results from, as well as its current manufacturing sourcing state in this case being approved. And another, I'll say important aspect in this context, of course, is the where use tab. The where use is gonna tell me everywhere where this specific part's being utilized in a higher level structure. And what this really allows me to do is get a full understanding of the change impact if we need to say, disqualify this manufacturer, disqualify this part for a specific context, what will be affected to it, what will we need to do in relation to that. So I'm not left in the dark when one aspect of my company and my organization makes this change and we're not made aware of it until it finally makes it to, let's say, the assembly line and we're basically producing scrap because we're using light in the wrong component. So here we can see that this beagle board, which this um, capacitor is a, a part of the structure, goes all the way up to this top level uh, Synergy Pro car, which is just a full scale automobile. So from a very, very low level to just this singular electrical component, all the way to the top level of a full size automobile that this is being made a part of. And you can imagine what having the wrong type of electrical component can do for a lot of modern cars these days. So basically, but, a change. Um, moving away from that, I'm actually going to dive more specifically into another capacitor that has a little bit more interesting um, AML and AVL information. So there, I'm going to do the search for the second um, capacitor in this line. So it's going to bring us back to our rear use tab because that's where we were previously. But now I'm actually going to select onto the AML and AVL tab, and that's going to again, <clears throat> excuse me, 
that is again going to bring us back to our approved manufacturer approved vendor list information but now we can actually see we have a little bit more in-depth information in relation to this specific component so in this case we have two potential um, manufactured parts that we're actually getting from two separate manufacturers and we can actually see that two of them exist i'm sorry they exist in both an approved and a do not use current station and underneath the actual um, AML and AVL change, we have the full traceability about the actual process that was gone to in order to get to that conclusion. So initially our TDK corporation component was just simply a preferred object, then it moved to approved and eventually the um, component from the microchip technology incorporated uh, became not to do not use. And if I were to select on to this corporation itself or this organization, what you'll notice here is not only are we managing the components that we are buying from this vendor, we're actually um, managing information about the vendor itself in our PLM system. So in this case, we're getting high level details around this, such as like the cage code, the current state of this manufacturer. So if the manufacturing of itself is qualified versus disqualified or canceled, and this is of course a configurable page to add in additional information, but another important um, subheading for this information is specifically the supplied parts that we're getting from this organization. So here we can see each and every component that we are utilizing in any of our assemblies that we're getting directly from this corporation. So again, this gives us insight into the change impact if this corporation were to move from say qualified to disqualified or canceled and a full understanding of the scope of what will be necessary in order for us to up rev and update our assemblies to fit our newer direction with our new preferred um, AML and AVL. So that was, I'll say, the view from the components perspective. So us diving directly, looking at the component itself. But the as important aspect of it is actually looking at it in the context of like a full bill, like a full bill of material, bill of information. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to navigate to the structure page of our Beagle board that we're actually um, taking a closer look at here. So here, if we go to our Beagle board product context, we can actually go to the structure subcontext, which will give us all of our various WT parts in a hierarchy in relation to this higher level assembly. And what we're actually seeing from this specific view, because we can utilize different views, refine our views even further based on the information we're most interested in, we can actually see the sourcing status and the costing status in relation to each and every one of these parts. So here we can see some of them don't have any AML and AVL information and might be a future task to add that information. Uh, some of them are marked off as explicitly do not use. Some of them are marked approved. So it gives us a quick and easy snapshot from our bill view of um, the, I'll say the vendor and manufacturing status of all of the objects that are being used for this higher level assembly. And currently this is just looking at the parts that we have provided as a part of this higher level structure. If we actually move up to show, we can actually show additional AML and AVL information, specifically the supply components from our manufacturers and vendors. And once we've added that, we also get the additional view of the manufacturer's name from which these components are being supplied from. Okay. And from here, we can also dynamically generate a multi-level bomb with AML and AVL information associated with it. And we can dynamically export this out as a, a PDF, an XML document or XLS document, whatever fits our current necessities. And of course, the columns that you're seeing here can be configured to show whatever subheadings of information are the most relevant or important for the reporting context that you're most interested in. But of course, for approved manufacturing, approved vendors, it's not a one size fits all situation. There's going to be different situations in different contexts where your approved manufacturer, approved vendor list is actually going to change. One of the bigger ones, of course, being where is this object actually being produced if we happen to be producing this object in different facilities. So allowing for that, we have the ability to refine our view via different sourcing contexts. So in this case, we have a default sourcing context. We have a context of this is being produced at a North American facility, a context that is being produced in an EU facility, or even just a prototyping context. So if you were to move to just looking at our production in a context, the type of manufacturers or even the manufacturers themselves that we're going to utilize are going to change. The approve and prefer process might actually change based on the um, based on the legislation that like the home region of NA. And 
the actual costing status based on what we've actually negotiated, how we're actually going to be buying from them might also change as well. So here we're just going to move right back to our default context just to do that. And the last thing I'm going to show us off here is just the ability to compare utilizing the AML and AVL information as well. So if we come back to our compare tool, which allows us to compare different um, structures, both visually as well as um, textually for the actual bill of information, I can actually look at the different versions of this specific Beagle board. So in this case, we're looking at the current latest design version of 1.4. And we can compare that to a specific baseline version of an initial configuration in that 1.3. Here, if we click on OK, so now that we have our two comparisons, we can select to our preference to make sure our AML and AVL information is actually going to show in our comparison. And then once we've done that, if we go ahead and click on OK, that's going to show us the varied differences between the two objects. So here we click on OK. Anything we see highlighted in blue in the bomb view up top or just to the attributes or visualizations view to the bottom, that represents a difference between the two, I'll say, bills. So we can automatically see that the OTS 1003 capacitor, there is a meaningful difference between the two. And here we can actually see that it's a child difference, meaning something that is associated or nested with this specific part represents the difference. And if we expand that out, we can actually see that the difference lies in the introduction of this manufactured film resistor component that didn't exist in the initial configuration. So what probably happened is we made the initial configuration without the actual manufacturer components. We went out to our approved manufacturing vendors to solicit quotes and solicit designs. We settle on one specific one, and then in the next version, our 1.4 version, we introduce that manufacturer component into our um, bill. And that was all done from a very strictly structured and very strictly controllable uh, means. So it's no longer just simply different departments siloed against different each other, communicating through emails or even less, I'll say, quick means. This is all happening through one single source of truth. So we're able to act on and utilize the information when we need to. And that more or less was all I really had planned to show for us today, just a quick view of what supplier management is, how it could be actually utilized for your organization for managing suppliers and utilizing approved manufacturing and approved vendor lists. So now I'll actually just um, stop going what I was and just see if there are any questions. So Anthony, one, one question is, um, what does SUMA stand for? So SUMA is just a shorthand for supplier management, SU supplier MA management. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Um, so basically like like anything else with Windchill, if you could still share your screen, Anthony, it's a lot Oops, better. Sorry. Than, that's all right. You just keep it up there. Um, you know, with Windchill, the way that it manages is when a change is made in one, 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 one location, it's made everywhere so that it's done across the enterprise. You don't have to worry about, oh, did the change, you know, was that change affected in other areas of windchill? No, it's made across the board. And that's the whole purpose of, of windchill is to help manage. And, you know, one change, a change made anywhere is a change made everywhere so that everybody's on the same page. So with that, um, that's going to conclude our time today at 20. Well, we started a little late, so we're just a hair over 20 minutes, which is perfect. I want to thank everybody for being on today. Um, definitely want to thank you, Anthony, for taking the lead on the uh, presentation of the demo today. As always, you do a great job, and I appreciate it. And um, in two weeks, we will be back with another Windchill webinar. So if you have any questions or you, you have any, any more information, you can just respond to the email that you received for this webinar. I receive those so I can, you know, answer any questions that you may have or give you any more detailed information. As if you'd like a more custom demo on Windchill, we can provide that for you also. Um, or you can email us at info, info at 3hti.com. Thanks, everybody, and have a great rest of your week.